Hello and good morning, Hollywood fans. Hollywood Central calling with new movie reviews. Well, and and there's actually movies in theaters this weekend. <laughs> exactly. Sadly, I only got to see one of them, but I have a couple others that are available digitally. Oh, excellent. That's good. That's good. I mean, that, that you you saw them digitally, or you you've just said people should just go and watch them. I mean, there are a couple movies that I review that are available digitally that are not in theaters, but new today. Awesome. Do you want to start with theaters, or what do you want to do? Let's start with theaters. I think it's always good to start with the big stuff. And nothing is bigger than George Clooney and Julia Roberts, let's be honest. Really? I've been waiting well, for this movie. Maybe Dwayne Johnson <laughs> at the box office may be bigger than the pair of them. However, as far as stars go and A-listers and Academy Award winners, you know, we've got George Clooney and uh, Julia Roberts teaming up for a romantic comedy, Ticket to Paradise, new in theaters today. And I mean, Honestly, it's like, you know, when you hear that that platitude of you could listen to them reading the the yellow pages, the phone right, book. Right, right, right. You know, it's like they're just so great. And they're such good friends in real life. It's so much fun watching them here. The basic premise is they're uh, ex-spouses that have had a bitter divorce, uh, you know, something like 25 years ago or 15 years ago they share a daughter who's graduating from college they're reunited for that and they're like they don't ever want to see each other again of course the daughter goes on vacation to celebrate her college graduation and mayhem ensues they have to fly down to bali together to try to get their daughter out of this situation that they don't approve of it's nothing too too bad basically she's she's gonna marry a guy she just met and she's gonna marry him in four days and they want to break him up mm. so um you know it's kind of the perfect little uh, set up for a rom-com and uh, they're just so great you know it's like it's great to see them the, you see is does she share her her infamous laugh in it too because you know when i go to a julia roberts movie i've got to hear that laugh oh yeah the laugh ah, the smile yes um yeah they are and by the way she's like the female tom cruise yeah. well i guess not the only but she's like she's literally not aging or whatever work she's having done is so good you know that she looks phenomenal i mean george looks great i mean they're both just beautiful incredibly talented knowing that they're real life you know very close friends and then seeing them um, play these competitive characters with one another and at each other's throats is just so enjoyable so it's a cute sweet uh, kind of everything you want from a movie. It's a very comfortable rom-com. It's nothing, you know, or it's no pretty woman that you're going to want to watch yeah. a million times again, but it's fun and it is, it was great. I saw it in the theater and I loved it there. So check it out if you're a fan of a rom-com. Wow. See, I, it's, I, I am such a George Clooney fan and I, in all yeah. honesty, I thought that, you know, that he had gone away because we haven't seen him in such a long time. I know. I mean, well, I feel like a lot of actors are, you know, being a little bit choosier lately. And any any reason, any insight on that, Mr. I go to the director's awards? Well, I think there was a little bit of a slowdown in production in 2020. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's coming out now it just feels like a few years, you know, and the rest of it. So, wow. So this is definitely a must see. So this is for all ages or do you think it'll be just for the uh, the uh, later it's years? It's PG-13, but it's yeah. really all ages. Excellent. So what did you see digitally then? Okay, digitally, speaking of like being choosy about roles, two of my two actors that I really admire, one of them my favorites, Ewan McGregor, and the other that I really admire, Ethan Hawke, play brothers, half brothers, in this new movie called Raymond and Ray. And it's on Apple TV Plus today, and it's a drama comedy, a dramedy. But the weird thing about it is, I'm like, why did they choose to do this movie? Because it's really not that dramatic and it's not that comedic and I and the couple oh. times where I thought it might be funny I was like am I is this funny and the drama it's like the drama could have been greater or, I don't know I just I don't know what inspired them about this script to make it and then even in watching it I was kind of bored which is really sad because if you look at Ewan McGregor and Ethan Hawke they're arguably you know as watchable right yeah, as yeah. George Clooney and Julia Roberts but something about them especially here in in this film where you know, the roles are both good for them, um, I, and they did good work. I just didn't see the real incentive for them to do this story. Like, I think, I don't know if the script maybe read better than the movie played, but it's a skip it for me. And mm -mm. I can't believe I'm saying that. I mean, Ewan McGregor is, like, probably my top three favorite actors. Yeah, yeah, you, of course. I mean, my God. I mean, he's that guy that you see on the screen going, well, I got to go. I got to go. 
I know. I gotta go. I want to hang out with him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm I'm disappointed with that one because I I once again I didn't see the trailers. I just usually go by what people are saying. Right. Right. Well, have you heard anything about Raymond and Ray? No, I don't even know. Yeah. I, but but like I said, I've seen posters. I've seen you know things pop up on Facebook and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, okay, my God, this is going to be a great show. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to be a oh, hit or that you'll hear man. people talking about. It. I don't. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, if everyone wants, I mean, listen, if you got Apple TV Plus, I do. If you have that, it costs you nothing to check it out. If you don't like it, you turn it off. Right. Absolutely. Well, let's go to the next movie. What 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 else did you see on digital? Okay, this one will cost you because Uh-oh. it's not on any streaming service, but it is available across streaming services for purchase and for rental um, fee. It's so it's digital on demand. It's also available now on Blu-ray and DVD. It's called Three Wishes for Cinderella. It's from Norway, and it's uh, it's basically a new adaptation of Cinderella uh, that's available two ways. First of all, with an English dub or in um, the original language of subtitles, which I normally watch. But mm-hmm. this time, I don't know why. I was like, let me check out the dub. You know, I, I never, ever choose that, but I chose to screen it that way, and it was actually a pretty decent dub. It was a little funny at times. Like, it probably is less com- comic, you know, if if you watch it with it, the original language and stuff, it's probably a little bit better, but I still enjoyed it and I'm still recommending it to stream, um, you know, or to purchase or to stream if you like fairy tales. Now, here's the thing about Cinderella. No matter how many times it's adapted, it's still watchable. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about, you know, I'm the Wizard of Oz guy, right? Mm-hmm. And I love the Wizard of Oz. And there's been recent news. There's a couple of remakes in the works for the Wizard of Oz. But if you think about it, it's been relatively untouchable because the original MGM classic is so such a favorite that people are like oh you can't remake it but if you look at a, a story like Cinderella that's been that like every year we get three different versions <laughs> for the last how many years and there and a, a lot of them are fun and I still recommend it even though it's kind of this is a better movie than that it's a little bit edgier it's a little bit darker um it's like kind of Cinderella meets Frozen because it's all in the Arctic oh, wow. of Norway wow. yeah and, it, and the characters and the story is a little bit more modern even though the costuming and the setting still looks a little bit medieval so it's it's very different and fresh that way and i and i liked that and it's not for everyone if you are like me and you like the fairy tale genre and you can tolerate a new kind of cinderella not even tolerate you'll enjoy this i enjoyed it so i'm recommending it to those like me for three wishes for cinderella um, it's magical and fun, yeah. and it's available digitally. And we all like little escapes like that. That, that to me, is a, you know, since it's starting to get cold outside and stuff like that, I, I want to watch a movie like this. It kind of gives me that escape while looking out the window at the oh, cold. Oh, uh, totally. And that's the other thing about, about Cinderella, like, or about any movie that you know, like, we know how it ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know kind of the beats. And this one has all the familiar beats of, like, nasty stepmother awkward (laughs) sister you know what i mean like there's a prince like she's gonna all that stuff um but the way that they do things is a little different it's not the typical fairy godmother it's not the typical um you know the prince doesn't have to save this the princess in the end it's like it's a there's got some cool modern twists that keep you you know and it's still enjoyable even though you know beat for beat what's going to happen and so i i that is it's comforting you know i think it is kind of like it's engaging to you it's not like putting on an old movie that you love so much you're just going to fall asleep and comfort that way but it's it's a like you said it's a nice watch so now, in, in a situation like this, I mean, do they have to pay a royalty fee of some sort, you know, by, you know based upon, or, no. is, or is it like a parody and you no, just... No, no, really? no. they would have to, like, if they're ripping off Disney and they're, you, if they want to license, you know, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, or if they want to get Gus Gus, or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. um, that was, that's intellectual property and copyright of, of Disney, they'd have to license that, um, like when uh, Return to Oz had to pay a licensing fee to feature Ruby Slippers in their Disney sequel really? to The Wizard of Oz okay. in 1985 because in the book, but it, it, they're silver shoes, right? But MGM and Warner Brothers now owns the Ruby Slipper copyright or trademark. And so the trademark issues with Disney's version of Cinderella are different than what's available in the public domain story of Cinderella. Okay, so okay. the story of The Wizard of Oz, the book from 1900, is all public domain. So anybody could make the story with Dorothy, Scarecrow, Toto, and the Yellow Brick Road and the Emerald City, and it just can't look like the Warner Brothers, you know, MGM version. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's, you know, so as long as you avoid those things, you can remake, you can continue to remake Cinderella and the rest of those things in public domain as much as you want. 
And now another important message from Ryan J. I just feel like we've just learned something. I'm going to say, that's awesome. Sorry. Today no. <laughs> in film studies. Right. But um, I do have a couple of things to promote, which are kind of fun. Go for it. Um, uh, this Wednesday, October 26th from 530 to 7 p.m., I'm hosting a free event uh, in downtown Milwaukee at New Line Cafe. You can go to my website to RSVP for it. But it's free. And I'm going to be – this is – Arrow, you would totally come to this if you were local. I'm – I'm emceeing a panel discussion about misery, Stephen King's misery. Oh, really? With a filmmaker and a screenwriter and a film composer, and then also featuring the upcoming stars of the locally produced Milwaukee Chamber Theater's production of Misery coming up uh, this next month. Oh, wow. And they're going to be doing a reading. And so, and that doesn't start till November 18th, but this Wednesday they're going to do a reading from the play, you know, and I'm just so excited to be a part of this. And again, it's free. It's this Wednesday. You can go to my website for the details and to RSVP um, if you're in the Milwaukee area. It's going to be really cool. Wow. You said a couple of things. So what else you got going on? Oh, the other thing is uh, that... For kids who like Gabby's Dollhouse, which is a very hit Netflix series that's mm -hmm. half live action, half animated, um, Gabby is coming to local Walmarts, one in Lake Geneva, a couple in Illinois. And again, you can go to my website to learn more information about it, to take your kids to see her and to win prizes and the rest of it. And on my website, I'm giving away five fifty dollars gift cards to Walmart. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> you could enter to win that. So, you know, there you go. And that's RyanJReviews.com. You got it. Excellent, dude, man. You have a great weekend and stay warm up there because I know you guys are up north, so you got to be freezing by now. We are a little chilly. Thank you so much. <laughs> you have a great weekend, too.